Hey guys, Sneaky Snake here, Brothers in Arms, World of Warships, and today's video, we're going to take a look into our next installment in our Tactics and Strategy series, and this one is called Making a Play. I'm divisioned up with my friend from APOC, Karamor. She's playing in the Gajdamada, the Tier 7 Indonesian slash British destroyer, and I'm playing in the Scharnhorst, the Tier 7 Premium German battleship, and we're playing some standard battle here on the map Haven. So this video that you're going to see right here is certainly not my highest damaging game in this ship. It is not my best game in this ship. And I'll be honest with you, is just, at least for me, more of a ho-hum round of World of Warships. However, what happens at the later stages of the game, when our team is down and I need to make something happen, is... <laughs> I'm just going to say it's pretty sweet. And this is the reason why I wanted to feature this replay, because, you know, when you're in a game and it's not looking too good for your team, sometimes you need to throw the passivity away. Passivity, I think that's how it's pronounced. Um, and you just need to make a play. You need to take a very large calculated risk. You need to know exactly what your ship is capable of. You need to know exactly what the enemy team's uh, intentions are or at least, at the very least, have a good idea of what they're going to do. And then you need to put yourself in a position to be able to block it and counter it. Now, again, because it's titled Making a Play, it doesn't always work. And that's something that you need to know. It's not like, oh, every time that I you know, think of what to do next, it's always the right move. No, of course not. But this replay right here should give you the tools necessary to think to yourself, you know, Maybe I do have enough hit points to push in, or you know what, maybe I do need to go kill that guy, because I have the ability to do so. And um, yeah, that's what this replay is going to try and get across. So I'm going to be pausing it uh, a few times during the course of the battle, and I'm just going to be explaining to you guys exactly what's going on. And again, at the end of the replay, when we get into a very sticky situation, I'm going to pause it every now and then, and I'm going to show you exactly the decisions that I made, so that not only can you get better with your Sharnhorst gameplay, at least for the purpose of this particular replay but just in general once again it's what I harp on so so much improving your thinking to be able to get better at the game so anyway with that all out of the way I shoot my first salvo downrange at the Bijoni he's angled a little bit and I still get two penetrations for 4,500 points of damage now the Scharnhorst in a nutshell what do you need to know about it it of course is a quote-unquote battleship that has some very interesting caliber weapons. They're 11 inch guns. It's the same guns that you have on the Graf Spee at tier six, that premium German heavy cruiser. And you get nine of them. They have a reload of 20 seconds before you factor in adrenaline rush. And they have, if I'm not mistaken, a pretty good Sigma of 2.0. So these things do not, I repeat, do not have very good penetration at range. And what it forces you to do is to get in close to use your AP effectively. Now, very unfortunately, we lose a Nicholas right at the beginning of the game. The Fubuki drops the torpedoes. However, you could see my friend Karamore is moving straight towards the smokescreen, and I told her, hey, what you need to do is just go charge that smokescreen down. Obviously, the Fubuki dropped all of his torpedoes, so he is going to be easy pickings for you. So at this point, we're just going to continue the push here around this side of the map. You can see the very vast majority of our team is moving over on this western side of the map. However, looking at the mini-map, you can see the enemy team is kind of gathering their strength. They're kind of circling up just uh, on the outside of their base. I try to get a cheeky shot through that little you uh, in the island, the little saddle, but unfortunately for me, the Prensicola manages to take care of business. Now at this point, I'm going to swing my turrets into play to help out Kira, just in case she needs it. A Fabuki versus a Gaj Damata is a very, very unfair fight, but nonetheless, that's what you should be doing when you're in divisions. You should be focus firing on targets, especially if they're destroyers, and uh, I'll be honest, that's something that I struggled a little bit with when I first started playing the game. I didn't think to myself that shooting at DDs, even chunking them down just a tiny bit like this right here, that extra 1,520 hit points is 1,520 less that Kara would have to do to the target, and she will be able to secure the kill right here. So, with 1612 left in the game, we are going to pause the video. Alrighty, guys, this is with about 1612 left in the game. I drew this nice map here on wowstactic.tk. It's a great website to use, especially for the competitive teams out there that want to drop strats on different maps and whatnot. It's a very nice thing to have. So you can see the friendly positions are drawn on the map, utilizing green and yellow, and the enemy team's positions are using red and white. White, of course, being last reported position. So you can see here that there are two main groups of enemy ships. There's a trio of battleships and one unspotted Omaha that are sitting around G6, G7, F6, F7. And I know exactly what they're going to do. They were already starting to move northwards before I paused the replay, and they are going to go right down the middle of the map and make a break for our base. However, 
they are also going to go up north and meet up with the other group of enemy ships. There's an unspotted Gajdamata, a couple of cruisers, and a King George V in D6, or excuse me, D7-D8. So with that being the case, both of those groups, the way that they're moving right now, they're going to go make a break right for our base. So what I told Kara to do is to continue to move and try to get on the enemy team's base. It'd be a very nice distraction to have, and a couple of our friendly ships are going to go help her in that regard. What we need to do, however, is wait for that enemy team that's centered on their base to commit fully to our base going down the middle part of the map before Kara were to go over on the enemy team's cap. So that's what I told her, and you can see my yellow arrows are the moves that I'm going to make over the next couple of minutes. I already see this is developing, and let's be honest, it's standard battle, there's only one cap, this is exactly what the enemy team is going to do. And then I also have some friends that are around me that are going to make a break and go back to help me at the base as well. So it's pretty obvious what they're doing, but this isn't even four minutes into the game, and I already see this is developing, so I figured Figured, hey, this is what we got to do, and we'll continue on with the game right now. Alrighty, guys, getting back into the gameplay with 1605 left in the game. You can see here that I'm getting some longer range shots down at the enemy Koenig, who is just slightly turning away. And that's actually a pretty good salvo at 15 kilometers, getting about 7,200 damage into that guy. However, I have switched back to the high explosive because I feel that um, at the angle that he's providing me now, these are not you know, 15 and 16 inch guns, which you do find at tier seven, because they're 11 inches, whenever battleships angle away, well, they honestly behave very cruiser-like. They do not deal a large amount of damage whatsoever. And because even though you have good Sigma, it's still German dispersion, landing shots on these targets at these ranges is kind of difficult, even if you do have a pretty good aim. So I've turned in, now getting my rear turret swinging into play. You can see here the enemy team continues their push right on down through the middle part of the map. However, I am angled towards those guys, so if they do want to shoot at me as I'm moving towards them, you know, that's their call, honestly, but they're not going to deal much damage. The Scharnhorst, of course, is a very nicely armored battleship, and the bow armor on this thing is pretty good as well. Unfortunately, I angled not enough right there for the Koenig. He gets a little lucky with a few shells that hit me in the superstructure, and he dealt about 9,000 points of damage. However, I do manage to light a fire on that guy. The other thing about the Scharnhorst uh, that's really, really awesome, though, is, of course, the torpedoes that you mount. You get one triple launcher on either side of the ship, and because of this, you are a king, you are a god at point-blank range knife fighting when you're going against enemy battleships, and that's why the torpedoes well, if you're not able to use them during a game, it's very unfortunate, because you should always be looking for an opportunity to use the metal fish that this ship carries. And not only will it really spike your damage, but um, to be honest with you, it's a way that you need to be able to play the ship. And, you know, getting rid of whatever fears you might have, making a play when you need to make it. 5,000 damage right there on the Colorado, again with the AP at 16 and a half kilometers, that was a pretty nice salvo, I'll be honest with you. The Koenig did manage to turn back, however you can see Kara is continuing to make her headway over towards the enemy team's cap. There also is an Omaha that's over there as well, so the enemy team actually made a pretty nice uh, job at coming back. However, you can see our team has now split up into two uh, parts. We got a Pensacola, a Leander, and a Krasny Krim that are over here near our cap to help out. Then you can see there's also a tree of ships that are behind Kara that are going to help push into the enemy team's base. I shoot a broadside at the guy's Damata. Unfortunately, he turned in and I wasn't paying attention to it. But luckily for me, he dropped his torpedoes and they are spotted. So I know that it's going to be about two minutes before he gets his metal fish uh, back inside the tube. So that's a very good thing. And now looking for an armor piercing salvo here on the Fiji. However, he does turn away. And because this isn't a normal battleship with normal caliber guns, if I were to shoot at him right now, he is angled extremely well. Chances are I would have had a bunch of overpens and a lot of ricochets. So that would not be a very good idea to, to do that in all honesty. The score is 338 to 418. You can see Kara is on the enemy team's cap, so that's very nice. And uh, those enemy ships that are down there will be dealt with by the uh, the friendlies that are going. However, you can see in about age 5, the friendly King George V actually made a hard turn to port, and he is now going to be coming up north to help out here at the cap, which is a very nice thing. So at this point, I do get detected as I come around, and you can see that the enemies that are arrayed against us are quite many. There's a Fiji, a Scharnhorst, a King George V, and a Nuremberg, as well as the guy's Damata that's up here as well. And it's myself, a Leander, a Pensacola, and a Krasny Krim. 
And unfortunately, the Krasny Krem, Pensacola, and Leander are all extremely squishy cruisers, so it's not looking good. However, at this point, there's no need for me to push back into our cap at the moment and lose a lot of hit points. I don't want to be getting focused right now. And it sounds a bit counterproductive, in all honesty, but the reason why is I need to save my hit points as long as possible, and then when these enemy ships decide to make a push into our base, then I'm going to turn in and try to take care of business. I continue to kite away, but, you know, I can see that my friendly cruisers are starting to turn back in, and after the salvo comes down range at me, I realize, you know what, this is the time to get pushed in, and the enemy team is actually making a really big mistake right now, and I'll point that out as uh, I'm getting ready to shoot my next salvo at the Nuremberg. There we go, the shots are out. So now, with 11.45 left in the game, I am going to once again show you the minimap. Alrighty guys, taking a look at the minimap once again, you can see that I'm in Echo 3, taking a hard turn to starboard to get back on the cap. I know that the enemy Gaj Namada is going to get there any second now, and he is currently not detected. You can see two of my friendly cruisers in the Krasny Krim and the Pensacola that are in D2 are also making a hard turn to starboard to get on the cap. And you can also see the green line pointing dead northwards is the movement of my friendly KGV who is coming back to try and help. Up north, there's the guys Yamada, a Fiji, a Nuremberg, an enemy Scharnhorst, and of course, a full health King George V. So we're going into this fight down on hit points, and at the moment, down on ships. The Leander at Echo 5 is the only other ship that's close enough to be able to help out. Now, the text that I put on screen is what the enemy team should have done. They should have sent a ship or two up north to get a really good angle on us three, myself and the two cruisers, that are pushing in to our friendly cap to try and interdict. Because, of course, when that guy's Damata gets on the cap, we can't just sit there and let him cap it out. We have to get back on it. Instead, they bottle up next to those two islands, the one small and the one medium-sized one, in C4 and at the southwest corner of C5, and they give me the ability to close the range and use my torpedoes. Now, this is something that I had realized and recognized at this point. Why they didn't send someone up up north, well up north, to get a good angle, is beyond me. But I realized this at the time, that they're all balling up and, you know, honestly making themselves a bunch of sitting ducks there. Even if they have the advantage at the moment, even if they are pushing into our cap, I realized that all I gotta do is get as close to those two islands as I possibly can, and I'll be able to put myself into a position to not only use my torpedoes, but, since it's close range, use the AP on the Scharnhorst and deal some massive, massive damage. Now again, they do have the Destroyer, and we do not, so it's going to be very tricky to get in there, and you know that the Gajdamata is going to make me his number one target. So with that being said, let's get back to the gameplay. Alrighty guys, getting back to the gameplay here with 11.38 to go. You can see that I'm continuing my turn to starboard. I do have the Nuremberg marked as a target, and that's exactly who I want my friends to shoot at. There we go, full broadside of armor piercing out. He's down to about 6,000 hit points as he does go undetected. Unfortunately for me, the dispersion is a bit off, and right here, I get lit on fire twice. However, I'm not going to put the fires out. I know that if I use my heal, I'm basically going to be able to make up for all the fire damage that I am taking. So now I'm just trying to shoot at the target that is providing me the best possible broadside. And you can see that that is still the enemy Nuremberg. So I'm pushing in here. There we go, 2,700 points of damage. And then the Pensacola manages to take care of business. But right now, the enemy team is actually making the prudent play, and they're trying to kill what they can kill. So they're focusing on my two cruisers that are off to my port side. And that's actually the completely good and smart play to make. Now, as I do make a turn back here to port, some torpedoes are going to get spotted, and very fortunately, fortunately for me, the Pensacola is going to eat the two of them that are right in the middle, so I'm easily able to turn to starboard and uh, present my bow in towards the target. Unfortunately, the Krasny Krim dies, and right here as I shoot another broadside, we're going to pause it here with 1025 left in the game. You can see the Gaj Damada, the Scharnhorst, and the King George V are all out in front of me. The Gaj Damada managed to get a double strike on both of my friendly cruisers, and now we are in a four versus three situation. Leander is trying to come up here, the King George V is trying to get some shots, but he is going to to turn to the right. And um, yeah, I'm pretty much alone at this point. That Leander is not going to be able to do too much burst damage. Burst damage, of course, is just dealing large chunks at one time. However, I already know that the Gaj Namada used his torpedoes because obviously the torpedoes that were meant for me struck into the friendly Pensacola. So he is going to be priority target number one. And because the enemy team decided, for whatever reason, to focus up right next to that island that is just off my starboard bow, what this means is that I'm going to be able to close 
close the distance, get within 6.1 kilometers of the Gajit Amada, and keep him spotted for the Leander and the King George V. So we're going to start the replay back up again here. You can see that he did try to use his smoke screen, and there we go. There are more of the torpedoes. I'm also staying as angled as I possibly can here, and you can see a lot of the shells are bouncing in. You know, having this really nice bow armor on the Scharnhorst is very, very beneficial. And I'm, again, shooting at the target that is giving me the best possible broadside. Could I have shot at the Gaj Damata? Yes, that is true. However, some shells... Uh, are going to be coming in here any second now against the Gajimata. I make a pretty big mistake and drop my torps. He does detonate, however. The King George V manages to take care of business. Now, once again, we're going to pause it. You can see the Fiji that is now straight out in front of me. Because he shot inside of his smoke screen, again, I was able to close the distance enough to be able to get him spotted when he popped off his guns. So there's no reason for me to shoot at the Scharnhorst. There's no reason for me to shoot at the King George V. I am going to shoot at the Fiji that is straight in front of me. So we're going to get the replay going. Going again here, you can see I'm swinging my two front turrets into play. The Fiji isn't even paying any attention to me whatsoever, as the Leander is trying to take care of business. Get my two forward guns out, and there we go. The Fiji gets citadeled, and now once again we're going to pause it, and now I've put myself in almost a perfect situation. The Scharnhorst that is off the front part of me is uh, more or less broadside. Now, I know that he is probably going to wait as long as possible before he drops his torpedoes. However, the King George V has stopped shooting at me because I've angled myself very, very nicely. So at this point, what my plan is, is I'm going to continue my turn to port just long enough to be able to use my starboard side of torpedoes on the KGV. And then once that Scharnhorst closes the distance enough and drops his port side of torpedoes, I am then going to gun the rudder hard to the right. And I'm going to basically go in between both of the ships. That is the plan that I have in mind, and let's see what happens. So as I start the replay back once again, you can see here I continue my turn to port. You can see also more of the shells from the Scharnhorst are bouncing. I turn just enough to be able to drop my torpedoes, and now I'm going to aim for the very weak part of German battleships. You can see here as I pause yet again with 926 left in the replay, I am aiming well forward of that first gun turret. German battleships in general have very weak thwart ship armor, especially at these kinds of angles. And what's going to happen, because as you you can see just below and to the left of the front turret, there's a nice little chunk of armor plating you can see indicated by that line that's in between the two sets of portholes. That is, well, it's not 32 millimeters. I don't remember the number off the top of my head, but it is armored enough to you know, arm your AP fuses. And when I start the replay up again right now, that's exactly where I'm going to shoot. And there we go. Four penetrations and one ricochet. All three of my torpedoes run into the KGV, and then I'm able to turn to the right just in time to be able to not get hit by that third and final torpedo. And now with Adrenaline Rush kicking in, I turn my front guns into play, and I'm going to shoot right at the rear side of the KGV and take care of business, killing my third enemy ship of the game, and I'm all of a sudden up to about 100 and 20,000 points of damage. So, that engagement right there was pretty freaking sweet, if I do say so myself. And with the help of the friendly KGV, the, uh, what was it, the Pensacola, the Krosny Krim, and the Leander, we were able to take a 5v5 by the horns, secure the base for our team, and then with the Shrine Horse getting the kill on the Koenig, we are going to take a look at the post-battle results. Alrighty, guys, taking a look now at the post-battle results. 490,000 credits received and 4.1k total EXP. I got a Confederate and a very well-deserved Dreadnought dealing 119,000 points of damage off of 76 shell hits and three torpedoes. I shot down one enemy plane, sank three enemy boats, had one Citadel and three fires, and had 64 secondary hits. Taking a look now at the team score, not the highest, 1,835 base EXP. Like I mentioned at the very beginning, I've certainly had way higher damage in games in this thing. I've had way better games in this thing. But that play that I made at the very end with the help of my teammates was honestly really freaking sweet. And when I got done with that, I was feeling extremely good. The Scharnhorst on our friendly team coming in handy uh, with three kills as well. And then Kara getting two apiece. I'd like to point out Fubarius in the Pensacola, the Leander driven by Dwar36, and the Krasny Krim by Kutach. I'd like to thank all of you guys if you do watch this replay. Play. The sacrifice that you two, especially the Krasny Krim and Pensacola made, uh, were invaluable, and it caused the enemy team to get a little too focused on you guys and allowed me that precious time to be able to get in close and utilize my torpedoes and put my Scharnhorst in a position where it is able to do the best possible work. Obviously, the Leander and the KGV that came back spoke in cat as well. They provided some help too. 
Carver. I think I put myself in a pretty good spot for that game, and I utilized everything that is good about the Scharnhorst. And when you're dealing with another one, like I was in that uh, little engagement up there, it's very difficult to be able to dodge his torpedoes and be able to take care of business. However, if he had more hit points and I didn't kill him with my two front turrets, I would have just turned hard to starboard, dropped my port side of torpedoes, and we would have been on our merry way. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope it gives you an idea of seeing on the minimap when you need to go and make a play, knowing when exactly to make it, and then when you are in the middle of combat, knowing exactly what to do. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this replay. This is the Sneaky Snake for Brothers in Arms World of Warship signing off. Please consider giving the video a like, commenting on it, or possibly subscribing to our YouTube channel. All of it is very, very much appreciated. And with that being said, guys and gals, as always, have a great day.